Welcome to Smart Engineering Tutorials. Today we are going to see another topic of Unit 1 which is Random Variables. So the name Random Variables itself clarifies that Random means any value, any random value and variable means the uh, values are different for every event. So we are going to see how these random variables are used in our communication system. So first of all we should have a very clear understanding of the. So the outcome of a random experiment. If we perform any experiment like of a rolling a die or tossing a coin it, the outcomes which we obtain are different in nature. For example, when we uh, roll a die while playing Ludo, what we see that we get numbers from 1 to 6. So we have an, uh, real numbers. And if we uh, toss a coin, we have the output in the form of a phrase like we can obtain a head or a tail. So there are different types of outputs which we obtain in different forms but when we want to tackle these uh, outputs in mathematical way or we need to perform some mathematical analysis what is desirable that each outcome should have a numerical value means whether it is a phrase or whether it is a real number actually we are going to have at the end some numerical value assigned to it so a real number is assigned to each sample point as per some rule. So whatever experiment is being performed, the outcome which we obtain, it has to be given some numerical value. And also the way of assigning has to follow some sort of rule so that there is a consistency for assigning to each and every outcome. And we know that whenever we perform a random experiment, the all different types of outcomes which we can obtain, they form a uh, family and it is called the sample space. And each outcome inside the sample space is known as a sample point. We'll see further. So, what we have seen that we have to assign a numerical value to each outcome by using some rule. What is that rule? It can be some sort of function. So, a function whose domain is a sample space. And sample space is the family or the collection of all the possible outcomes of a random experiment. And that function has a range. And what is its range? Some set of real numbers. Means there are fixed values what the numerical value can be assigned to the outcome or the sample point. So that function which is used to assign the value is called random variable of that particular experiment. Since it will get uh, different values for the outcome and that outcome will be assigned that particular numerical value according to some particular function. So these things are specified and on that basis only we will give the values. So that particular function is what we call the random variable. It will be clear, clear more with the help of an example. Let's say there are m sample points. Let's say there is a sample space and this sample space is the collection of all the possible outcomes. So let's say we have performed an experiment m number of times since we are having the values from zeta 1 to zeta m. So let's say the experiment is performed m times small m times. So we'll have outcomes m and each outcome is represented as zeta 1, zeta 2, zeta 3, zeta 4 up to how many zeta m. So this is the sample space and each and every outcome which is inside the sample space is known as the sample point. Now we will be using some sort of rule, some rule and on the basis of that rule a real number is assigned to a particular zeta, to a particular sample point and 
that value what we say x zeta i means this i is from 1 to m since we have m different outcomes and this x of that particular zeta i is its actual value assigned that is it is a real number given to that particular sample point. Let's say this zeta i has got some value x1, this has got some value x2, this has got some value x3 and so on. So actually the random variable is uh, having different values of different outcomes and those values are x1, x2, x3 and it's not necessary that this uh, number of values x1, x2, x3 they all have to be till xm. Let's say we are giving them values x1, x2 up to xn. These are the different real numbers given or assigned to the different outcomes from 1 to m but it is never said that this n is equals to m. The number of times an experiment is performed, it will give the number of outcomes and this m can be greater than n. It doesn't has to be equal to n because it can be possible that more than one sample point, more than one sample point or the outcome is being given the same numerical value. We will see further. Let's see the example of tossing a coin. So, when we toss a coin, we can only get two types of outcomes that is it can be a head or a tail. So, this is a phrase actually and we have to give some sort of numerical value. So, what we are uh, we have taken assigned for assignment we have followed a rule that when head comes we will give it 1 and when tail comes we will give it as minus 1 in this particular experiment. So, what we say this x dot we are talking in general now x dot is a function which maps what is it is doing it is making a relation between the sample points and the assignment of a particular numerical value it is a function which maps the sample points zeta 1 to zeta m into real numbers x1 x2 up to xn which i have just told and it is not necessary that n and m are equal so these are the different values and for uh, assigning these values, we have used a function x. So, this x is called a random variable and it takes different values of x1, x2 and xn. So, the probability of the random variable, this x taking a value xi, this i can be different from uh, different uh, numbers like 1 to n, we can say, or we can in general broadly speak that the probability of a random variable x that it takes a value xi is given by p capital x and inside the small uh, inside the bracket xi so the probability of random variable x having value xi is written like this where this x is the random variable and actually what it gets the numerical value is xi so if you seek uh, very uh, it's clear from this that this random variable is actually a dummy variable and the actual values assigned is xi i depending upon what values it is it is getting so the above example which we have seen for tossing a coin i'm showing you with the help of a graph here on the vertical line we have the probability that the random variable x has the value of x small x and this is the capital this is a dummy variable actually and this is the actual value so here what we have zero probability and 0.5 probability and uh, what else we have here it is on the, the this is the x line the the different values of x can be if it is a head then it is one and if it is a tail then it is minus one and in the center it is zero so when we toss a coin, head or tail can come equally, can have equal, will have equal probabilities. So, the probability of head coming is also 1 by 2, that is 0.5 and of tail is also 1 by 2, that is 0.5. And they are given some numerical value, for head it is 1 and for tail it is minus 1. So, I have shown like this. 
so i think this is also clear how we represent graphically if you see here in this particular example of uh, head or tail there are only two values assigned numerical values assigned one or minus one it cannot have any other value so we say that random variables are of two types it is either discrete or continuous so moving further we have discrete random variables so a random variable which is discrete in nature that means it can take only a discrete set of values some particular numbers only for example if you take rolling of a die in that particular experiment you can have only values from 1 to 6 no other values than that so precisely saying if a random variable capital x takes on only a finite number of values in any finite interval of time then it is called a discrete random variable also there is an equation that for discrete random variables the sum of all the probabilities of occurrence of the outcomes their sum is 1 for example for the coin tossing experiment if head comes then also the probability is 1 by 2 and if tail comes it's also probability is 1 by 2 so the sum of 1 by 2 for head and for 1 by 2 for tail gives you 1 this is what it is trying to say that is the summation of all the possible uh, outcomes if i sum up their probabilities it comes to be 1 and the other type of random variable is uh, continuous so if a random variable assumes any value in the whole observation time interval then it is called a continuous random variable so it can have whole large range of uh, values in a continuous way so this was all about what is random variable and its types and in the next uh, video i'll be taking one example to uh, clearly show that uh, how before discussing the example i'll tell you what is cdf and then we'll see a numerical to how to uh, build a graph of probability and from that how can we draw the graph for cdf that's all for today's lecture thank you and share and subscribe to my channel for further notifications